I have been getting so many requests over the past months how to fix pole starters but I didn't get around to it till now because it's been too damn cold in Canada. Finally, the temperature is about maybe 58 Fahrenheit or 15 Celsius, so now I'm going to work outside and show you. I would say those kind, the Briggs and Stratton ones, are the trickiest, but I'll see if I can show you them. But I'll see if I can show all of them to you. Now, this first one has a common problem. The string got all wound up, not in the groove where it's supposed to go, but up under here, and the spring, the recoil spring, got bent around backwards. Some people are completely clueless to why that happened. Well, this is the reason. The ratchet thing that holds down your flywheel, well, this part is supposed to be lubricated, but this is a rusty shaft. Well, long before that happened, off and on while you were using your mower, it made big screeching sounds and sometimes would even stop. <laughs> well, here's why. Well, with the cap removed, this is called a sintered powdered metal part. And it's got in the bottom of the hole a little felt wad to absorb oil. Well, when the machine gets left outside a lot, or this has never been taken off and lubricated, this shaft gets rusty or the little bit of oil that was in there dries up and it starts to burn onto the shaft and it leaves like black marks around here. And that's what happens. It shaft, if this starts to heat up because there's too much friction because this isn't moving, it's held into that hole while the motor is running and everything else is turning. So heats up and starts screeching. It just keeps trying to grab this thing and turn it against a pole starter. Well eventually it may seize up enough like this one and actually grab the whole thing and bugger everything up. So the solution, you don't even have to spin off this tight thing that holds the flywheel down, you can leave it on. You just use an ordinary screwdriver, pop off the cap, and this thing lifts right off. Stick some steel wool inside there and clean up the hole and get the little pieces out. Then take some fairly fine sandpaper, like finer than, you know, finer than 120 grit, and sand this area nice and smooth. Then dump about 10 drops of automatic transmission oil down this hole so it goes on the sock or the little felt thing in there. Put some on your finger. Wipe it on here. Don't use engine oil in here. It doesn't last as long or work as well. It'll gum up sooner and cause this thing to seize and damage that again. This is the best stuff. So sometimes just by wear and tear the ends of these springs break off. Notice the end has a little divot on both sides. Well, if just the end breaks off, you can just regrind two little divots just like that. And so what if the spring's a little bit shorter? Even if it's like six inches shorter, it doesn't make any difference. So it doesn't matter which end you want to repair. You can reuse these springs over and over again. On one wheel like this with a spring all bent around backwards, it's even possible in most cases just to straighten it out and put another nice curve in it and reuse that spring too. Whenever you take apart your pole starter it's always very important to remember if the spring went like this or it went like this. Don't forget to take notice. So of course to get it disassembled to that stage all you do is bend up the two tabs. There's two extra tabs in case these ones break off. Never bend down all four. Always save those two extra ones for the future when these ones get too tired and broken if you have to repair this more than once so you always have two fresh ones to bend down. Now you always want to wind enough string in there that it pretty much can't fit anymore but not so much the string is rubbing on the metal cover. Lawnmowers that have the safety bar on the handle or the dead man switch have this extra long piece so don't forget to calculate that into the length of string you need to have the extra long piece that goes all the way up to the end of the handlebar. So, on a Briggs & Stratton pole starter, the spring goes in this way. Of course, not like that. So now I'll show you how to rewind it and install the spring without it flying apart on you. Just grab it like that. Pinch one side fairly snug, but not really snug. Oh yeah, the next thing is, whenever you're doing this, the phone rings. So take the phone off the hook, because when you let go, the spring flies apart. All right, got that problem solved. Now back to wanting the spring. So I've got it pinched here, and I just start pulling it. 
I have this big piece hanging out but that's fine when the diameter gets smaller so it'll fit inside that hole there or pocket then stop take the extra wind it around just like that now see it's got spaces keep squeezing it a bit pull it to the spaces are gone wind it up and now we're ready to install the little notched area in the hole in the cover that's what I'm talking about that end goes in there just like that so I stick it in sideways twist it carefully set the spring in the pocket and then when it's all the way placed in there and that's hooked in the hole then I can release it and I keep my thumbs pressing it down so it doesn't jump out and then I when I release it it'll stay there it won't unwind anymore just like that now it's a very good idea to take some of that automatic transmission oil and dribble a bit all the way around the outside of the spring right on top of this you know the spring so it seeps between the spaces having that spring oiled makes it not a lazy spring which means when you let go of the recoil it sucks itself back in very quickly like it's supposed to instead of has a piece of rope hanging out possibly that could get caught in the blade now you take your wheel whatever this thing's called and you wind your string up in the direction it's supposed to go on a Briggs & Stratton it's this direction there's that part where the springs you to hook onto afterwards and you wind it all the way up till the string comes to the top of the edge of the surface there it's there now that this is all wind up now the trickiest part trying to get that little spring tab that is sitting in the middle of that circle in that little hole in the bottom without the spring popping out you have kind of got to get a finger or two in there to hold the spring down against the body grab a piece of it and <laughs> this is the tricky part get it slipped onto that wheel and then just tip the wheel horizontal and then it locks itself and then before you let go of anything you twist the wheel backwards that tightens up the spring to make it smaller and then start dropping that plastic wheel down into this pocket well at the same time slipping your fingers out There, I did it first try. Then I slowly release it, and it actually just turned back a little bit, and it's sitting in there not trying to jump out. Everything's fine. There's no spring tension. Now I just re-get this the little string fell out a little bit, so I just rewind the string by pushing it down around the edge to make it fall back in the groove. See, I'm just tucking it in. And that's it. So the rope is wrapped around there as many times as it should go. And now I just stick the piece through this hole so it comes out there. There's still no tension on this thing and the tabs aren't bent down yet. Done. Don't put my knob on yet because I don't know how long to make it yet. Now I'm ready to bend the tabs down. Tabs are bent down, but you've got to leave a little slack. You don't want them pressing against here. They've got to have about a millimeter space, each one. Of course, I forgot to mention, the knot here is just a double knot, a double ordinary knot. If you tie a single knot, there's a strong possibility could get eventually yanked right through. 
Now if you have a sticky pull start that doesn't like to retract quickly, it's either seized on that ratchet thing, so you've got to take it off and oil the shaft like I explained, or you can just take off your pull cover like this, dribble oil down this center hole while holding it upside down on an angle like this, and then when you've got several drops, like maybe 10 or 20 dribbled into there, just start pulling the handle back and forth and working it into the spring, and then just reinstall it on your lawnmower. So I've got extra rope on this one because this one goes on the lawnmower with the safety handle. But now I want to figure out where I'm going to have to put my knob or my pull handle. So there's still no tension on there, but it's fully wound. So I just put my finger there and I start pulling. Then I let it retract and I see where it retracts to. Well, it didn't quite retract all the way, and when you do want it to retract all the way, you want there to still be a little bit of tension on it. So now I put my finger here, pull it again, well, and it retracts pretty much where I just put my finger the first time. So that's where I'm going to put the knob, if this wasn't on a lawnmower that had a dead man's handle. If it just had the knob that stayed down here. So then I leave a couple inches to tie onto the knob or the handle. If this is the kind of lawnmower that has a safety handle, then I would tie a little knot there just so I can go to the next step. If you're working on a pole starter that's a factory original and it has that extra piece for the safety handle, well then it has that little chunk of metal clamped on but a knot like I just made in the other one takes place of that little chunk of metal so it's perfectly fine. So, now you just figure out where you're going to tie the knob and you're all set. Simple as that. Now let's say for example your string is all frayed in one spot or more than one spot and it looks like it's going to break and you want to change your string before it does break and then you have don't want to have to rewind your pull starter up. Well then you remove your pull starter and pull the string all the way out till it won't come out anymore. Like that. When it's all the way out hold the string near where it goes in the hole and stop it from re going back in. Like that. Now take an ordinary vice grip and clamp it. Like that. Don't clamp it so hard that it crushes anything but hard enough that it can't unwind. Then just pull the knot out like I did. Snip off the knot. Pull the string through. And it's time to put a new string in. You just feed the new string in through the hole until you can see it in that hole. Then you just get a pin or something like that and just jab the string and hook it and start pulling some of it out through the hole like this. Then tie your double knot like I said. Pull the string back. And make sure it's long enough. Release the vice grip and let it wind itself back in. Super simple. Now if you're unfortunate enough that the string already broke and you want to rewind the string into your pull starter but you don't want to take it apart and you want to get it all retensioned right, I'll show you how to do that now first thing you do is cut off the knot, get rid of the last piece of old string, then you rotate the wheel counterclockwise six times. On the last rotation make sure you stop rotating it where the, where the knot hole lines up to where the rope goes through the cover. Then while holding the wheel so it doesn't unspin itself, put the vice grip on just like I showed you before and it holds everything in place. Now just fish your new string through like I just mentioned. Tie the knot, make sure there's enough, release it, and it's all pre-wound and pre-tensioned. <laughs> Don't have to take anything else apart.